Hello and welcome to second grade story time for our class. I'm Mrs. Harris. Thanks for joining me. Today's book, or the book for right now, is called The Egg Tree, and it is by Katherine Milhouse. This story was written in 1950, um, and it actually won the Caldecott Award, not just the Honor Award, but the First Place Award for its illustrations. This story is about a traditionally German, like a, just a, a traditional German family and some of the customs um, that they would be doing on Easter or around Easter, the holiday, um, in their family. I really like this story because my family, my my mom's mom, my grandma, is, um, is German and her parents were German whenever she was a little girl. She grew up speaking German around her parents and grandparents. And I think that it's really interesting to think about just some of the heritage that goes along with traditions that we still do today um, to celebrate holidays. I don't actually celebrate Easter like my, my grandma and my family do, but I still am really interested in the, just the the community and the cultural traditions involved with it. So I'm going to read this story today, The Egg Tree by Catherine Milhouse, and then I'll post it on Dojo along with the AR number so that you can take an AR test on it if you choose. I'm going to turn the computer so you can see a little bit better. Here we go. Clorox wipes out of the way. It was very early on Easter morning, so early that the children were still asleep in their small red house, and all the animals were quiet in the big red barn, all except the rooster. Suddenly, the rooster threw out his chest as if he were blowing a horn. Cock-a-doodle-doo, this will never do, he crowed, and just then the sun came up over the red hills. The rooster crowed again, and all the animals woke up. The third time he crowed, he woke up Katie, and Katie woke up Carl. Carl, get up! Maybe we can see the Easter Bunny bring the eggs. Katie and Carl tiptoed across the floor to the window and flung open the shutters. How good the outdoor smelled and how lovely the garden looked. The rabbit hasn't come yet, said Katie. See, there are flower petals that I put out for him on the lawn. He hasn't eaten a one. Carl left. I don't believe in the Easter rabbit. Ooh. Carl laughed. I don't believe the Easter rabbit eats flower petals. If you want the rabbit to come, you have to whistle for him like this. He whistled. Shh said Katie. Grandma said we, wouldn't, we mustn't w wake up our cousins till it's time for the egg hunt. But there won't be any eggs to hunt if the rabbit doesn't bring the eggs, said Carl. He whistled again, a bit louder. He hoped his cousins in the next bedroom would hear him and get up. Then they too could see the Easter rabbit bring the eggs. Carl and Katie leaned out the window. The morning was full of sounds. Birds twittered and cows mooed, horses neighed, pigs grunted, geese honked and hens cackled. Church bells rang out from the village over the hill, but still the Easter rabbit did not come. Once there was a rustle under the big lilac bush, but it was only the cat. Whistle just once more, please, Carl, Katie said, and this time Carl whistled with all his might. Suddenly, Katie put her hand over his mouth. Shh, Carl, there's the rabbit in the garden, and he's nibbling the flower petals. Well, the children held their breaths. How the rabbit bounced about the flower beds and burrowed in the bushes. At last, he bounded out of sight behind the barn. Come on, Katie, said Carl. Let's wake everybody up. He ran down the hall calling, Susie, Lukey, Johnny, Apollonia. The Easter rabbit has come. And in a few minutes, all the children were dressed and out in the barnyard. The egg hunt had begun. Grandmom smiled from the kitchen door. Which child would win the prize for finding the most eggs? It would not be Carl or Katie, she was sure, for this was their first egg hunt. The other grandchildren had come every Easter to the little red house. 
at first. Katie and Carl thought hunting for the colored eggs the greatest fun in the whole world, but somehow their cousins found all the pretty eggs. Katie and Carl just did not know where to look. Who would think that the rabbit had left eggs in the feed bin or the watering trough or even up in the hayloft? In the garden, it was even harder. The colored eggs looked so much like the colored flowers, but at last, Carl found a nest of three eggs in a magnolia tree. Now Katie was the only one who had not found a single egg. In the kitchen, the hunt, the hunt began all over again. Katie was sure she would find eggs in the kitchen, but here too, the rabbit had left eggs in the straightest places. The clock case, the cookie cutters, and even under the butter churn. Katie began to run around and around like a waltzing mouse. If only she could find just one egg. Even little Apollonia had found an egg and was already eating it. Hurrah, I found another egg, shouted Carl, running out of the stair closet. I have the most. No, I have, said Luke, and he lifted a purple egg from the teapot. teapot. I have five. Round and round the kitchen ran Katie, but now she wanted only to run away and hide. She felt so stupid. Then, just then, she saw the attic stairs. Maybe the Easter rabbit had left eggs for her in the attic. Katie began to climb the creaking stairs. While the big attic was so dark and lonely, Katie shivered a little. It did not seem quite so dark soon, and she could see into the far corners. A spider was busy spinning her silken web across a bar of sunlight. What was that on the shelf in the dark corner? A box? It looked like a hat box. Katie tiptoed across the dusty floor. Could the Easter rabbit have left eggs in an old hat box? No, of course not. How silly she was. But still, she climbed up on a chest and lifted the lid of that hat box, and there were eggs, all packed snugly in an old beaver hat. It must have been a long time since someone had put them away. Katie took out the eggs carefully and counted them. One, two, three, four, five, six. What beautiful colors! And there were pictures on the eggs. Katie took the hat full of eggs and walked slowly down the stairs. The Easter rabbit had not forgotten her after all. She was sure that she had won the prize, but there was Carl in the kitchen with a whole pile of eggs on the table, and he was very excited. I found 12 eggs. I've won. I've won, he said. I found six. Katie said and put her hat full on the table beside Carl's, but Grandmom stopped laying the breakfast cloth and her eyes grew big and round. Why? I'd forgotten all about those eggs. I'm glad you found them, Katie. And now for the prize. Carl has won the prize for the most eggs, but Katie has won the prize for the most beautiful eggs. Grandmom gave them both and big cookie rabbit with an egg baked in its middle. And that was breakfast time. So the children began to crack and eat the, their hard-boiled eggs that they'd found during the egg hunt. Grandmom brought a big pitcher of milk and Katie and Carl shared their cookie rabbits with the other children. Let's eat the eggs now that Katie found in the attic, said little Apollonia, who was still hungry. No, 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 said Grandmom. That very idea. Besides, they're hollow inside. Grandmom sat down, holding the beautiful eggs in her lap. I painted these eggs myself when I was a young girl. Right here in this kitchen, I painted them. They turned out so pretty that I kept them all these years. But now, each of one, each of you may choose one for your own to keep always. Carl chose first. He picked out an egg with a picture of a fine galloping horse on it. Katie chose an egg with a lovely bird sitting on a branch. Katie held up her egg and looked at it closely. She turned it round and round to see the bright colors. And Susie, Luke, and Johnny each chose an egg. Now there was only one egg left in the old hat. Why, this egg has the letter A on it, said Grandmom. A is for Apollonia. Apollonia took the egg. It's pretty, she said, but I do wish it was good to eat. The children put their eggs in a row on the window seat. Now what shall we do with them, they asked. 
We don't do anything with them, said Katie. They are so beautiful. We just look at them. Grandmom did not say a word. She put on her shawl and went out the kitchen door, and in a few minutes, she came back carrying a small tree. She fixed the tree so it would stand on the table, and then she ran a thread through each of the beautiful legs and hung them on the tree. Why, it's an Easter egg tree, said Katie. An Easter egg tree, an Easter egg tree, sang the children, dancing all around the tree. It was such a lovely tree, but it was very small. Suddenly, Carl stood still. Grandma, he said, would you please show us how to make eggs with the pictures on them, and then we can have a bigger tree? Why, certainly, said Grandma. First thing tomorrow morning. Today, we keep Easter. See the next morning. The next morning, when the children came downstairs, they found Grandma dying eggs in the kettles over the fireplace. They hurried through their breakfast, for they could scarcely wait to learn how to make pictures on the beautiful colored eggs. There were not enough paints to go around, so Grandma said that the boys would have to scratch designs. On the eggs with their pocket knives. Grandmom took sheets of paper and drew all the designs she could remember. Each picture had a name. The bright and morning star, the deer on the mountain, the cooing dove, the pomegranate, the horn-blowing rooster. Oh, Grandmom, paint an egg with a horn-blowing rooster, the children begged, so Grandmom painted a handsome rooster blowing on a horn. All the children found they could make pictures on the eggs. Even little Apollonia could paint the bright morning star. Soon the table was as happy as a flower garden with all those painted eggs, and now they had enough to make a big tree. Let's go find one right away, said Carl. So Carl and Luke and Johnny went to the woods, and they came back with a young white birch tree. It was so large that it had to stand on the floor. The children trimmed the tree with the eggs they had painted themselves with, and with many plain dyed ones. Susie and Apollonia hung small baskets from the branches, and under the tree, Grandmom placed an enormous cookie rabbit, which she had just taken from the oven. Katie hung up the eggs that she had found in the attic. If she had not found those eggs, they would have never had an egg tree, Grandmom said. Katie felt very proud as she hung her egg with the lovely bird on the topmost branch. It is such a beautiful tree, said Katie. I wish that everyone in the world could see it. Yes, said Grandmom. It makes a body feel as if spring has come right into the house. We must give a party for it. So Grandmom gave a party for the tree, and all the children went from all the farms. All the children from all the farms were invited. An egg tree, the children said. We've never seen a tree that grows eggs on its branches. And all those children went home and told their fathers and mothers about the egg tree. And the fathers and mothers all came to see the wonderful tree in the little red house. Next Easter, we'll have a bigger tree, Katie said. A really big tree, said Carl. And next year, the children began weeks ahead of Easter to trim the egg, the, the egg tree. This time, the tree was so tall that its top touched the ceiling and hundreds of eggs hung from its branches. When the sun streamed in, the tree looked like a piece of the rainbow. More than ever, Katie wished that everyone in the world could see their lovely tree. Land sake, said Grandma, who was standing by the window. Who are all those people coming up the driveway? They were village people who had heard about the wonderful egg tree. And more people came to see the tree, and more and more and more. They came from near, and they came from far. Some even came from the big city. The little red house had become famous. Children brought presents to put under the tree, Easter toys and bright baskets, and painted wooden eggs from lands across the sea. Thank you very much for letting us see the tree, they would say. And now we're going to go home and make our own Easter egg trees. Well, Grandmom looked very pleased and said, that's just fine. There's nothing like an Easter egg tree to bring spring into the house. A happy Easter to you all. 
and when all the visitors had gone, the little red house seemed very quiet. The children sat on the floor and played with the presents spread out under the tree, and suddenly Katie ran up to Grandmom and hugged her. Oh, Grandmom, she said, everybody in the whole world really did come to see our egg tree, didn't they? Grandmom laughed. A body would think so to look at this floor, she said, and then she took up her broom and began to sweep briskly. Tomorrow would be Easter, and the house must be fresh and clean. Katie ran out the doors and picked some flowers in the garden. She scattered the bright colored petals on the lawn for the Easter rabbit's breakfast. It would never do to forget the Easter, ba the Easter rabbit, for the Easter rabbit had not forgotten Katie. I hope you loved that story. That's The Egg Tree by Katherine Milhouse, and I'll be posting more about how to take an AR test on this story in just a moment on Class Dojo. Have a great day.